Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Monday, February 15th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Minnesota game is in 199 days. We are under 200. It's almost here. The game against Michigan in 285 days. This was quite an eventful weekend in Ohio State basketball, both for the men and the women, and in very different ways. Uh, first, let's talk about the men. They crushed Indiana 78-59 on Saturday. During that game, right in the first half, CBS released its projection for the top 16 teams in the NCAA tournament field. The Buckeyes were the fourth number one seed. My guest is Buckeye Scoops Matt Goldman. He covers basketball and is the co-host of Anything But Football, of the Anything But Football podcast. Matt, it feels like every time I talk to you, my expectations for this team are just a little bit higher than they were the last time we talked. I think that's a lot of Buckeye fans and their feelings towards this basketball team this year, especially because we didn't know what to expect of them. And I think a lot of the country didn't know what to expect of them. Coming in, they were preseason 23 in the country. We expected, I remember our preview show we talked about, that we were expecting them to finish in the mid, middle of the uh, tier of the Big Ten round. If they go above 500 in the Big Ten, that, that's a winning season. That's a really good season because we thought this Big Ten was so talented. And I think this week we saw with Indiana 78-59 that Ohio State is really, really good basketball. But we talked about right before the show that they're doing things. They're not doing the same thing every week to win a game. They have way so many different uh, what's the right word? assets to uh, end up winning. And this week, I think rebounding was the key especially with Justice Suing, Zed Keen, Seth Towns. They really showed it all. And Kyle Young as well, that this Ohio State team also knows how to like box down the paint, and that was key to the win. Yeah, they. I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of like perplexed by this team because it's like I, I very clearly remember thinking like, yeah, I mean, right, right what you said. Like, yep, if they're like a Sweet 16 team, you know, you finish a little above 500. Big Ten is so deep, and the Big Ten is so deep. This is not like the Big Ten has been this incredible disappointment. Indiana is a good team. Like India, this is not a vintage Bobby Knight team or anything, but they are a tournament team there. And they're the kind of team you see in the second round and Ohio state puts a 19 0 run on them in the first half, right? Like right towards the end of that is when they released the uh, number one seed. And it was like, you're looking around like what is going on right now. And then the 22 to four run in the second half. So to run a team like that out of the gym, I mean, that that's the kind of thing that kind of has to make you sit up and pay attention. Like, okay, like, this is this is a team that really has a pretty high ceiling. Yeah, it's eye popping to say the least. Especially this Indiana team you mentioned, they're not that bad of a team, especially in the Big Ten with so much depth. And this Indiana team, they have Trace Jackson, Trace Jackson Davis, one of the best players in the country. He did have twenty three points and nine rebounds, so he did have a very good game. But pretty much Ohio State limited every other player in this Indiana team. They were out rebounded, they were outscored. They just didn't look in sync and Ohio State kind of made them look silly at times just be, based off those runs that you mentioned the 22-4 run and the 19-0 run so I think Ohio I think a lot of people are starting to realize that this Ohio State team has a lot of different outlets and that Coach Holman's really on this team uh, together just he mentioned on ESPN and College Game Day that they're a really tight-knit team and that that's something that's really kept them together this season that's why they're at this stage at the moment as the number four team in the nation so it's going to be a big test the next few weeks on what they can do. If they can continue that performance from Indiana against Penn State, this will be magnificent. And this could make Ohio, this could give Ohio State the Big Ten championship this year in the regular season, which would be unreal. Yeah. And, and there's going to be some uh, plenty of questions as to how the Big Ten gets actually sorted out and how Michigan, Michigan did return to action uh, on Sunday. They, they won at Wisconsin. So they are back in action now. But they, you know, they got to sort of figure out, like, how are they going to award the conference championship? And, you know, will they hold the conference tournament and all that kind of stuff? That's all still a little bit TBD right now. Um, one thing that was interesting to me on Sunday, and you've kind of hinted around this a couple of times, was the Buckeyes won without doing a lot of things they've relied on a lot this season. They, you know, you normally think of them just jacking up a ton of threes and they're just, you know, they're, they're hitting 40 percent of their threes. And it's like, OK, well, yes, you score a lot of points when you hit 40 percent of your threes. Well. They didn't do that. They, they were seven of 16 from three. That's not a lot of threes to shoot. That's not a lot of threes to make. They had seven steals. They had 21 points off turnovers. Those are both season lows for them. Those are things that they normally are relying on and they didn't do it. And they still won easily against a team. That's like a, like I said, like maybe a second round NCAA tournament kind of caliber team. The game before that they won, despite getting zero points from Justice suing, not a whole heck of a lot out of EJ Liddell. Those guys, those guys are both back and, and, performing really well against Indiana. It seems at this point, like the only consistent thing with this team is they just keep winning. It's a different way every time, every night. It's a different, you know, it's different guys every night. 
but it's just someone steps up and then they win. That's what makes this that's what makes this team so interesting. And Justin Arns, we didn't even mention, only had five points in this Indiana game. And Justin Arns has been averaging around nine to ten points in the last five games. So the fact that even their one of their top scorers from the three point line didn't even do that much against Indiana is astonishing because it it fascinates me how much depth this team has. And now even with Michi Johnson included, then you have Seth Towns coming off the bench. Just as soon as can play multiple roles. So this Ohio State team, they, they have so many different outlets. And it, you mentioned that they usually are relying on their shooting, but we saw Indiana, they rely on their boxing out, their rebounding, and they played great defensively. So that I think Ohio State, and we, we've talked about the statistics before, their defensive efficiency is not, not the prettiest to look at when it comes statistically. They're improving on that too. And if they start to improve on that and they're going to consistently stay that way on offense, they're going to keep winning games and they're going to find new solutions to do it. And that's just this Ohio State team this year. And that's what's so fascinating about them and why they've taken the country by storm. Yeah, and it's just, it's a different guy every night. And it's guys who going into the year were not necessarily people you thought like, this guy is going to be a big contributor to the team. Like Zed Key is a great example. Zed Key has, you know, he came in, he was just, he's another freshman. You don't necessarily really expect anything from a freshman. This was not like D'Angelo Russell coming in. Uh, DJ Carton coming in where it's like five stars. This guy's going to be incredible. Immediate impact guy. So, you, you know, he came in and was like, okay, well, I guess we'll see what they get out of him this year. And then he's been just a really consistent contributor to this team. I mean, he, and there's just, there's a bunch of guys like that who are just, everyone's doing the little stuff and that ends up adding up. Yeah. I've been saying a lot of the times, Musa Jello is a good example of that too. I think when you see him on the court, his numbers are not, whoa, the, they don't jump off the paper. It's just he's doing the little things. He's doing the boxing out. He's getting up. He's very athletic, so he's diving at the ball. See him get those occasional alley oops. He's able to make some contested plays, and he's able to do stuff that most players on this team aren't able to do. He's very aggressive when it comes to his playing style, and especially for a small guard like him, that's very interesting. And then you touched on Zed Key. He's been one of the favorites all year. I think he's a fan favorite as well, just for his little finger gun action he does, and just the way he plays and his style. I really enjoy him, and he kind of reminds me of Charles Barkley in a way, just of the way he is and his mannerisms and talking to him before. He's a very good guy, and everyone just loves him, and this team, they're just so tightly wound. I really think that that's what makes it special, the little things that you mentioned, that this Ohio State team has really improved upon this year compared to last year. Uh, Next up for the Ohio State team is a road trip to Penn State on Thursday. The Nittany Lions, in case you didn't see this on Sunday, They just lost to Nebraska. Yes, Nebraska still plays basketball. Who knew? The Cornhuskers' first conference win in more than 13 months. They beat Iowa on January 7th, 2020, and then they beat uh, Penn State yesterday. Not great. So the follow-up, the Penn State trip with a massive home showdown with Michigan next weekend. As I mentioned, Michigan just got back on the court for the first time in more than three weeks. They beat Wisconsin yesterday. That road trip to Penn State, I mean, that screams to me, look ahead spot, trap game, whatever you want to call it. Does that, I mean, does, is, that, is that something that just sets off the sirens for you as well? Yeah, trap game has come into my head already, think, looking at the schedule. And it's Penn State. They're, they're such an interesting team this year. And we actually did a preview right before the, their first Penn State game. And I remember talking about that their guard play was some of their best, and they're very speedy, and they're very fast down the court. But in that Penn State game, when Ohio State, it was close at some points. They lead. They still lead the conference in offensive rebounding, and that's where they shine against Ohio State. They out-rebounded in that game by more than 10-plus rebounds, and that's the key for Penn State. And I think that if there's going to be one team to knock off Ohio State and get their fifth loss in the season, it can be this Penn State game away on the road against a team that just lost, and so Ohio State might overlook them and be like, okay, they just lost to Nebraska. And did you guys see what we did to Nebraska in the beginning of the season? So they're going to think they're fine, So this could be something else that they are looking ahead and then that could be some trouble heading into Michigan and then they still have a game against Iowa and Illinois remaining. So I'd be a little cautious for Ohio State, but I think Coach Holman knows what he's doing. I think he's a special coach and that's why he's one of the coaches of the year at the moment. Yeah, this is this is one of those games that separates the uh, real championship teams who just take care of business and don't don't get, you know, don't find that banana peel from uh, the ones. It is very easy to do. It's very easy to overlook a team like that. That's uh, this is one of those separation games. Um, finally, we are two of the very few people who have actually seen some of these teams play in person this year. And, and I always feel like it's important to let people know 
what that's like. I mean, this has been a very different season. Uh, you had a very unique experience on Sunday when you showed up at the shot to cover the women's basketball game against Northwestern. Uh, let people know what happened there. Yeah, so Scarlet Gray Sports Radio, the student network, I was going to be calling the game with my partner Murphy, and I got up. I was a little late, unfortunately, because transportation, just getting across from South Campus all the way to the shot is not the easiest of times. So I get into the arena, and now because of a lot of COVID protocols, you have to do a health report. You have to stand there, and they do a body temperature of you, and then you go through a little security thing. And the security guard says, you can't come in. And I'm thinking to myself, this is interesting. He says, the game might be canceled. I said, why is the game going to be canceled? He's like, there's a positive test. So I'm like, well, this is interesting. So they end up do letting me into the stadium and into the uh, media, media part where uh, the broadcast booth was set up. So I'm sitting there with my partner and Gary Pettit comes by the SID for the women's basketball team. He pretty much just says, hey guys, the game is canceled. That's the official notice. A, t- a member of one of the teams tested positive and we asked, who, do we know which team? And he wouldn't give that info. But it was just so surreal because there might have been a total of 30 people in that arena, maybe less, no families at the mo- time. In an empty court, the lights were pretty much off besides like the main ones above. The scoreboard was off. It was just really weird just sitting there and you could just like, you could hear a pin drop, honestly. It was just so quiet. So that, I guess that's the reality. I kind of c- called my parents after. I was like, I don't know if I should be like, I don't know how I should feel about this. Should I be confused? Should I be angry that I got up and dressed up in a suit to go to this at like 930 in the morning? How should I feel? And then my parents were like, it's COVID. Like it's 2021. Like anything's possible. So I just found it very interesting the way that they let the media know what's going on, that they literally came right up to us and said, player test positive, game's not happening. And it's crazy to think that, that that is now how sporting events can happen. It could be right up to tip-off. That was about an hour and 15 before tip was supposed to be scheduled. So the fact that it came that close and Northwestern was in the building at the time, they were at the shot, is really scary to think that that's how sporting events go now and that that's the reality of COVID at this point. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I keep telling my kids, uh, even with their sporting events, like, don't take anything for granted. Enjoy it. However many, you know, however much you get to play, enjoy it. Because, you know, nothing is guaranteed at that point. And that is a good illustration of nothing is guaranteed. Like, even even when you show up at the game, nothing is guaranteed. It, it has been it has been weird at the shot. I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's the lack of parents. But it is, it's like even weirder at the shot for basketball games than it was in Ohio Stadium for football games. Or at least you had, like, the families there. So there was a little bit of, like, human presence outside of the teams like the shot is just kind of eerie for hockey or for for uh for basketball it's that has been a little weird this year um you guys you and mick walker host the anything but football podcast and uh i hear you guys have a new episode coming out later this week and uh boy there's there's a whole bunch to talk about outside of football at ohio state right now isn't there there is a bunch to talk about right now basketball we're going to talk about the penn state game it's going to be after the penn state game so we'll be previewing the game now i guess we can call it that because it's going to be two top five teams of Michigan and Ohio State. We're going to talk about the, re- the wrestling season has been progressing so far, and Ohio State's had a pretty decent season at the moment. Uh, baseball's coming up. The lacrosse schedule is released for the men's team, at least. They're starting up late February. They have a So far, they only have five games on the schedule just due to COVID, and they're figuring out still Johns Hopkins, Michigan, Penn State, Maryland, Rutgers, some of the best teams in the country. The Big Ten is the best at lacrosse, at least what mo- the rankings show. So that Ohio State's going to have another challenging season there, but there's a lot of good sports here right now at Ohio State. The women's basketball team, even we're going to talk about, they're still number 12 in the country. It's not like they just lost that because of the game today. They are still one of the top teams in the country. Yes, they're on postseason ban, but it's still interesting to talk about. Ohio State sports is right now an all-time high, so it can't get better than that. And as a student, I guess it's not normal that I'm experiencing it where, experience it where I'm not at the games, but it's still pretty cool to go to a school that has some good sports. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned all those things, and all those teams have been uh, had really interesting seasons. The women's hockey team, too. The Big Ten does not sponsor women's hockey, but the women's hockey team, uh, they're ranked number four in the nation, just swept number two Minnesota on the road this weekend. They will probably move up. Number one, Wisconsin, they, they are unanimous number one. The women's team beat them earlier in the year. Like, that is a legitimate national championship contender as well. So uh, lots and lots and lots of interesting stuff going on right now. We're going to have uh, a whole bunch of coverage of all of it. And, uh, you, know, you know, we'll also talk some football. Don't worry. We'll also talk some football at BuckeyeScoop.com. We have an uh, incredible team of insiders. The nice thing about have this, having this enormous team like we have at Buckeye Scoop is there's something for everyone. There is, uh, we have tons of recruiting. We have basketball recruiting. We have football recruiting. We have uh, Nick Walker has been covering camps, uh, uh, 
Mark Givler has been covering camps. Uh, we've got guys all over the place. Tony Gerderman on the beat, Ross Fulton covering the X's and O's, Alex Gleitman on the East Coast covering all that stuff. I mean, it is an incredible team of insiders. And uh, you can find it all at BuckeyeScoop.com. You can uh, sign up right there to become a member. We also have a bunch of really great free content there as well. So even if you're not a member, uh, check that out at BuckeyeScoop.com. Also, make sure, make sure you check out all of our great podcasts, including Anything But Football, which Matt co-hosts with Mick Walker. Uh, you can find that and uh, Buckeye Weekly, which I co-host with Tony Gerderman, and uh, all the other great podcasts that we produce at just by search Buckeye, searching Buckeye Scoop on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, wherever fine podcasts are sold, you can find those as well. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.